Antien. We've actually been here for a couple days. We're at an apartment complex that we found on Airbnb. It's a bit outside the city center. Really didn't know that that would be a big deal or not. It turns out it's actually kind of a big deal to be outside the city center because getting around the Antien is so difficult. There's no real taxi service. There's only really tuk-tuks. So you gotta kinda get catch a tuk-tuk on the side of the road, which is kind of difficult. And then you gotta negotiate the price as you always do with tuk-tuks. And then you gotta deal with all the exhaust as you always do with tuk-tuks. Anyway, we've been really just kind of chilling around our apartment for the last few days, trying to find little places to eat, which we haven't really found any places. I mean, there's no Uber, there's no Grab. There's not even a McDonald's in Laos. So that, if that tells you anything, there's just, there's just it's hard to get around and do things. So today we are getting a rental car and we're gonna cruise around and we're gonna see all the different sites there are to see here in Vientiane. We're gonna go see the Great Stupa. We're gonna go see the Victory Monument. We're gonna go see some temples. We're gonna get some grub and uh, hopefully it's a pretty exciting day. But this will be like our main day out in Vientiane because getting around is virtually uh, it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult, and it's just not enjoyable. The one thing is we do have an awesome host here at our Airbnb, uh, this apartment complex. Uh, very nice, him and his wife. The boys go down to the, the main office in the apartment complex here and hang out and get on their computers, and uh, the, uh, they you know feed the boys and bring them snacks and make them tea and that sort of thing, so that's really nice. So uh, anyway, we're going to head out and get some eat. The NTN. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot to mention, uh, while we're here, I was just walking down the street and I saw a barber shop, so I got this sweet cut. And Amy loves it. Still not sure about it. She loves it. That right there is our trusty steed, the Kia. Well, uh, driving in Dantan is definitely an experience. Yep. Just like everywhere else in Asia, it's a very organic driving experience. Not a lot of uh, rules. Very interesting. All right, let's go. Okay, so first impressions of Vientiane is that it is very dusty. It is definitely the most dusty city that I've been to. And last night, I don't know what was in the air, but it was pretty bad. And I mean, you couldn't even walk outside without covering your mouth. So the smog or people burning stuff combined with all just the dirt, it's very interesting. It's, uh, it's unpleasant, I gotta tell you. That, that part about it is, is not cool. So what is this place? Uh, this is Wat Sin Wong. And it's where a girl sacrificed herself to appease the evil spirits. And she's considered the guardian spirit of Vientiane. So when they were building this, a girl uh -huh. came up in here. She sacrificed herself. And she to, she basically killed herself. Yeah. Sacrificed herself. She Okay, she committed yeah. suicide. And that was supposed to appease the evil spirits. What yeah. does appease me? Make them like happy. They're like, okay, cool, you killed yourself. We're not going to be so influencing over the lives of the people here, I guess. Oh, uh, so she killed herself with a knife or something? I don't know how she killed herself, but I would presume that that's probably the case. What year was that? Let's say on there. 
Okay, so this temple was built in 1540. Santa. And by Loatian calendar, it corresponds to Monday 16th, February 1540 AD. Wow, so since 1540 AD, so that's about the time where this girl sacrificed herself. So, a little bit of time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but, but how is it still beautiful? Well, they keep they keep it uh, taken care of. They repaint it and make sure any broken stuff gets repaired. I mean, they've obviously done a good job. Yeah. Well, it beautiful. looks like brand new. I mean, this sucker's, you know, darn near 500 years old. Yeah. Oh, and since I'm thinking about it, so I'm always pretty cautious about doing anything in a foreign country, really. But renting a car specifically, I'm a bit more cautious about. So I went online and found an additional insurance policy from rentalcover.com that for $8.50, I got up to like 82,000 in coverage. Full coverage, no deductible. So I thought that was awesome. Now there is a little bit of coverage that comes along with this car, but it's uh, there's no medical coverage, but our travel insurance would cover that. But if we wreck into somebody, we are gonna, I would have to pay out of pocket to fix the car. Although the insurance that comes with the rental car would fix their car. So with the extra policy they bought, $8.50, peace of mind, it's a pretty good deal. Somebody. All right, is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's over here. Okay. Hey, somebody. Somebody. <laughs> uh, kids? Oh, no. Uh, two or two. So this place is called... Wat Sisaket. Wat Sisaket. Wat Sisaket. So this is a main temple structure that's right next to the presidential palace. It still has. Ah, look at this, guys. Isn't this cool? What is it? This wall of Buddhas around the whole exterior. Yeah. So in the other temples, it's usually, you can only see little pieces of walls and little pieces of the Buddhas left over. Yeah, I remember like in Ayutthaya where you would just see like little remnants of Buddhas and you would like little remnants of pillars. Yeah, and like, like the things they're sitting on or their bodies with, without heads and arms and mm -hmm. legs. So this is what it would look like usually, a big surrounding wall full of Buddhas. Interesting. Well, this is really cool. So you'd have the, so this was very common to have a temple in the middle like we got here. Yeah. And then this surrounding wall of Buddhas. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So yeah. that's what they look like. All those temples where you saw those ruins. Mm -hmm. That's cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Wall holes in the walls and there's tiny ones in there. Yeah, little man. This is the there's thousands of Buddhas here. Yeah, you see this? How it was built? With these pegs mm -hmm. to keep this board on. That's interesting. Yeah, that's how they built it before they had nails. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They uh, held it with pegs. Yeah, yeah. See, look, they have other pieces of wood here that keep it in place. All work together. So I guess these are all tombs of people in the government, I'm sure.
So that's a brand new temple being built. So Lao, I think, is back to kitties in the temple. Because if you will look, Bastion, right behind you. And oh my goodness. The kitty, oh my goodness, the kitties have multiplied. <laughs> Somebody comes to pet and they all come out. Kitties in the temple and Lao. Oh my goodness. And there's another one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Four kitties. They were loving it. Palace, Palace Presidential, Palace Presidential. Did that's exactly how they say it? I have no idea. Well, those are some official cars of mean? official people. What do you mean official cars? Like government people. This is called a motorcade. What's a motorcade? A motorcade is a long line of cars of like a, you know, a high ranking official. That could have been the president right there. Mm -hmm. Could have been just like a high ranking person in the government. I don't know, but it was definitely somebody. I saw some military people. Yeah, military people, police. Flags on was, cars. There was two. Uh, no, uh, there was two police in front with a uh, cool motorcycle. Okay, good. This is Wat Fra Cow here in Vientiane, and admission price into this was also twenty thousand kip. Kids get in free. Wait, ten thousand kip each. Correct, Amundo. All right, so we just arrived at the Great Stupa, which is considered, according to what we read, the most sacred monument in Laos. And it is pretty darn gorgeous. Built in the 16th century. And we got some uh, cool little popsicles. Uh, we got a coconutty thingy. Uh, no, thank you. She's uh, selling the birds that you can uh, uh -huh. let loose for good luck and whatnot. 
Not really our gig. Uh, kids? Free. Okay. Come check. Big complex, very clean, big complex, which is cool. They really take care of this whole area here, which is nice to see. Very clean, big complex. <laughs> you like how he said that? Yeah. <laughs> There's something special about this particular location for us is that I just looked and there is a geocache hidden somewhere up at the top. So we're gonna try to find it. That's pretty cool, huh? Gonna find this sucker. already on this one. Huh? I already looked on this one. Mm -hmm. Alright. Doesn't look like the geocache is all the way up there. The clue was that the geocache is all the way at the top. But it's not. It's not at the top. Okay, so we think the geocache might be out here. 
I don't think it's over there, luckily. Maybe behind this light. So check under every, every one of these lights. Look at all the way underneath. Yeah. Hey, Bastion. So I just found it. Oh, yeah. See it right there? Okay. Well, we gotta go tell the other guy. Okay. Can you find it? Yep, yep. we found it. <laughs> Geocaching in Lao. <laughs> well, it's really stuck. Mom pulled it out like nobody's business. She got nails. nails. Oh, yeah. And we forgot a pen. Oh, we don't have a pen. Jeez, why are we always finding geocaches without a pen? You don't have a pen in your back? In your back? No, I never keep a pen on me. Okay. So what, where, are you, where, are you, where are you going? Okay. Okay, that's like geocache fail, like number one rule, like the top fail is you got to go geocaching with a pen. I would say more times than not, we're always finding geocaches without a pen. Hey, Dad. But we still find it? it and we got the video to prove it. Was it under this one or that one? That one. Okay. That pretty much concludes our day in Vientian. Very beautiful temples. Very cool monument here. I gotta say, I was talking about, I was talking a little bit about how dirty it was here, but I do have one very good thing to say about Vientiane, and that it has fantastic bakeries. I mean, the, the breads, the pastries, we went to a bakery today, and it was just, it was, you know, one, the best I've ever been to, as good as. Now, I haven't been to France or anything like that, but damn good bakeries. Real butter and flaky croissants and man I should have videoed it but anyways that's one really good thing obviously because it's uh, got a lot of French influence from when France occupied it so long ago it's not necessarily dirty it's just really dusty yeah so a bit dusty a bit dustier than normal sometimes the air quality is really bad but fantastic bakeries and very nice people the people are very nice here very accommodating everyone we've had a chance to talk to has been really kind to us just the tuk-tuk situation but lao please please get a grab or uber situation going on here and make it so much easier for us tourists Seriously though, you, you're you joking around, right? When you say you don't like my haircut? Well, I'll put it this way. Do you think it looks good when a cat gets shaved? Oh, <laughs> I get what you're saying. So you do like it after all. Oh, jeez.